Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about consistent systems of linear equations. But before we really begin, I need to remind you of what I mean by consistent and inconsistent. An inconsistent system has no solution, whereas a consistent system has at least one solution, right? It could have a unique solution or it could have infinitely many solutions. But a consistent system will be a solution that has more than no solutions. Now, I'm pretty sure I've already shown you in this class at least once how we can transform a system of linear equations into a corresponding matrix. Ax equals b, where a is the coefficient matrix. So that would be 2, 1, 3, negative 1, 4, negative 1. x is equal to uh, the... Uh, solution vector that we're looking for, x1, x2, x3, the combination of x1, x2, and x3 that makes these equations true, and then not enough room, but I'll write b is equal to the vector 5, 0. And we've also seen in this class that in order to solve that equation, what we can do is we can augment a with b, row reduce, and draw some conclusions about vector x. Geometrically, this system is represented by two planes in space, right? Because I've got two equations and three variables. And we kind of know just by thinking about how this is going to work, that just provided that the two planes are not parallel, they're going to intersect. And where they intersect, they're going to intersect in a whole bunch of points. They're actually going to intersect in a line's worth of points. So this is going to have infinitely many solutions. Okay? just provided that they aren't parallel, but we'll have way more to say about that in a few minutes. So I'm not really sure if I've, I've mentioned this. I know we've defined an M by N matrix in this course, but I'm not sure if we've talked about an M by N system. I think you would probably know what I meant, but an M by N system of linear equations has M equations and N variables. And we kind of take the same set of steps to solve these, like I mentioned. So we started by cooking up an augmented matrix, getting A augmented with B. And now if we've got an M by N system and we augment it with an extra column, I'm just going to point out that this is an M by N plus 1 matrix. Okay, And then we're going to do some row reduction. To get to a matrix that is in reduced echelon form, which I'm going to call C augmented with D. And we know that these if we applied just, you know, our standard row operations, whoops, these have the same solution set. Just one shot. All right. And the row reduction, doing these row operations, does not change the dimensions of the matrix. So I'm going to say that C augmented with D is also an M by N plus 1. But I'm going to make some comments here, and we're going to, you know, draw some conclusions about these systems based on C augmented with D, not based on properties of A augmented with D. So I'll, I'll just kind of jump forward and, and start by saying some things that I think you've already started to notice. So my first comment is that a system is going to be inconsistent if and only if it's, you know, fully reduced augmented matrix has a row of the form all zeros and then one, right? Okay, so if it was like that, then we would see, oh, okay, hey, we've got a no solution situation here. I mean, actually, if in fully reduced form, right, it would be in reduced echelon form because for reduced echelon form, each of your leading ones is the only non-zero entry in its column. Okay, but I'm going to talk about these leading ones here for a second. So we're going to be talking about these leading ones frequently enough that I'm going to give them a name. We're going to call them pivots. Okay? And a pivot is going to be a leading one, meaning like when we look on a row, the first number we see, and it's a one, okay, it's going to be a leading one in a matrix that's in reduced echelon form. So I'm going to, and just for the sake of, uh, you know, the rest of the discussion, I'm just going to replace that with a zero. So this is, you know, I'm going to use the same matrix for more of my comments. And I'm going to just identify the pivots for you. Okay, that would be right here, right here, and right there. Now, not every one in a matrix that's in reduced echelon form is a pivot. It has to be a leading one in a given row. Okay, so these are my pivots. 
I went outside my shot a little bit. Okay, so this has three pivots. And I'm just also going to say, we're going to say let r equal the number of pivots of, you know, a given matrix. Okay, and we'll have, uh, we'll have a reason to call this r later. We'll have a name for that, you know, in terms of a matrix. But for now, you can just think of it as the number of non-zero rows. Okay, because it is going to correspond, because if a matrix is in reduced echelon form, then the first entry in any given row is a one, and that one is the only non-zero entry in its respective column. Okay. So these are the difference. Okay. My second comment is that variables corresponding to pivots end up becoming dependent variables. And I want to show you why that's true using that same matrix here when we go to actually find a solution. So if I was going to, you know, kind of write down the solution space of this of this system, what I would do is I would start with the first row and I would say x1 plus 3x3 plus 4x5 is equal to 1, x2 plus 2x3 plus 3x5 is equal to 2, and x4 plus x5 is equal to 2. Now what I'm going to want to do is solve for x1, x2, and x4 in terms of x3 and x5. But if you look back to the matrix in reduced echelon form, that's where the pivots are. And the reason we want to solve for x1, 2, and 4 is that, you see, they're the only, you know, say for x1. This first equation is the only time I'm going to see an x1 show up because I've cleared out that whole column because it's in reduced echelon form. So that's why it's convenient to solve for these in terms of the others. So x1 equals 1 minus 3x3 minus 4x5. Okay, then this one is going to give me x2 equals 2 minus 2x3 minus 3x5. And then this one will give me x4 equals 2 minus x5. Now, if we had to write this solution as a vector, right, we would say that x is equal to, well, x1 is 1 minus 3x3 minus 4x5. x2 is that. x3 can be whatever it wants x4 is 2 minus x5, and x5 can be whatever it wants. Okay, we could write it like that. And so kind of like the next conclusion that you would probably want to come to is going to be, I forgot to, I was going to shade these pivots over here just to show you, we're solving for them, and they're depending on x3 and x5. But then kind of next logical conclusion is that these, uh, these columns that have a bunch of junk in them these correspond to independent variables. And we saw that just, just before where, you know, x3 and x5 were allowed to be whatever they wanted. Okay. All right. So the next comment I want to make after that is that r is necessarily less than or equal to n plus 1. Now, you might be saying, wait a second, dude, R represents the number of non-zero rows, so shouldn't the number of non-zero rows be less than or equal to the number of rows, which is M in this situation? And I would say no, because it's in reduced echelon form. And the easiest way to see this is to look at a tall matrix. You know, think about how it's going to go... Here, what's it going to what's going to happen when I go to row reduce this thing, right? I'm going to use this first one right here to clear out the whole rest of the first column, right? And there's not going to be any consequence in the second column because I got that zero with it. Okay, so that's a pivot right there, and then it will functionally clear that whole column out and make these all zeros. And then on the right, uh, there won't be any consequence because because that was a zero right there. And then I could take this this one right here and use it to clear out the rest of the second call. And so, really, we can only have 
as many pivots as we have columns in a matrix. And we know that what we were doing when we were trying to solve an M by N system was we were augmenting it with an extra column, which made it an M by N plus one matrix. So R is less than or equal to N plus one. Now, if R was equal to N plus one, then the system's going to have to be inconsistent. And I think I can draw you, uh, I'm going to look at a different matrix that represents a three by three system, right? So it will be a three by four matrix. And so if it's in reduced echelon form and it has four pivots, whoops, hold on. Yeah, my example of a three by three system is not going to work in this case, right? Because I need uh, I needed a fourth one here. But point still stands. Say I have a four by three system, and end up with a four by four matrix, and I end up with the same number of pivots as columns. Well, then I've got a pivot over here to the right of the vertical bar, meaning I've got a zero 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 one row, meaning I've got an inconsistent system. Okay. So, if the system is inconsistent, then R needs to be necessarily less than N. But we also know that the number of columns of a matrix is, is a very discrete situation, right? We can't have, you know, four and a half columns to a matrix. That, that would not make sense. So, if it's going to be less than N plus one, and it's going to be a whole number, then it's going to have to be less than or equal to N. And that will be relevant to us. And all of these comments together in their totality lead me to the theorem that I'm going to post in here in a second. The theorem says that if we've got, you know, our reduced augmented matrix and reduced echelon form, and we have R pivots, then the system's solution space has N minus R free variables. Okay, so let's go grab that matrix that we're working on and the solution set and, and look at it and see if that makes sense with what we just did. And it does fit, right? We had three pivots and five columns, or five, um, it was a, what was it, a five by five system. And we had three pivots, meaning we had to have two free variables. Okay. And also, I think another thing, oh no, I, we noticed it because we were talking about it at the beginning of the video with the two, two planes in space is kind of the next theorem. And then the next theorem is that if we have a system that's an M by N system with fewer equations than variables, then the system has either no solution or infinitely many solutions. And right, we can't really visualize what it would look like to consider a, you know, a four by seven system. We don't know what R7 looks like, right? And that doesn't make any sense. But what we can do is we can go back to R3 and R2, the ones that we're familiar with. And so if we have an M by N system, like a two by three system, like we were talking about at the beginning, that's either going to be no solution or infinitely many solutions, right? We saw the two planes in space, they were either parallel or they intersected in a line and that was infinitely many solutions. Okay, so that's, you know, just illustration of the second theorem that we've got a system of equations that corresponds to a wide matrix then that's going to either be no solution or infinitely many solutions, but there's not enough equations to pin down a unique solution. Now let's talk about homogeneous systems for a minute. A homogeneous system of linear equations has the form AX equals zero. So to, you know, go all the way back to when you first, you know, were learning about systems of equations in an algebra class, maybe you had X plus Y equals zero and 2X minus 4Y. What is going on? Me. and 2x minus 4y is equal to 0. Or maybe in terms of like, you know, a augmented matrix, we would have something like, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, augmented with 0, 0, 0. And you'll see in the next video why we're going to be interested, actually really the next two videos, why we're going to be really interested in solving homogeneous systems. And so I think that this is just going to lead me to telling you a couple of facts. Like the fact that every homogeneous system is consistent. Okay, I think it's really easy to see why this is true. 
One reason is that x equals the zero vector is always a solution to ax equals zero. Now, it might be a different, you know, dimension zero vector if a is not a square matrix, but it, you know, x equals all zeros is always a solution to a homogeneous system. Also, you could think about, okay, if I was going to row reduce this guy right here, there's no way that I can get a all zero row with a one on the right side of the vertical bar because there's no way I'm going to be able to introduce anything to the right side of the vertical bar besides a zero. So that's just another way of thinking about it. Now, I do want to point out that we are going to call this x equals zero. We're going to call this the trivial solution. Because, you know, whereas with real numbers, if you have some equation like ax equals zero um, and a is not zero, that means x has to equal zero. Well, that's not always the case with matrices. Um, okay, that does not always the case. We've seen already situations where we've done matrix multiplication with no vector where neither the matrix nor the vector that we were multiplying it by were zero. Okay, and we'll have a whole lot more to say about that, you know, in the coming weeks. And then the last thing I want to tell you about homogeneous systems is that if you've got a homogeneous system that's m by n with m less than n, then you are guaranteed infinitely many solutions. Okay, and so we need to think about why this is true because, you know, I think it's right there for you to see. All right, first of all, if it's an m by n system with m less than n, earlier, earlier we said that that meant that there were either no solutions or infinitely many solutions. But then we just said that every homogeneous system is consistent, meaning that no solutions or inconsistent is not an option. So that means I'm only left with infinitely many solutions. And I think that's just about all I've got to say about this. Uh, I think in the next video we're going to actually go and we're going to you know, do some more computational stuff.